As bow hunters, we know the most important thing is to execute an accurate shot. A well-placed shot is gonna kill your target animal 10 times out of 10. In order to have consistent, well-placed shots, you need accurate arrows. So today we're gonna walk you through our process of building the Exodus MMT arrows, which in our opinion is going to yield the most accurate arrow for bow hunting possible. The steps in this process do require specific equipment and specific tools, but don't worry if you don't have these tools available to you, you can head to the website exodusoutdoorgear.com and order tailor-built arrows from us at Exodus. We'll build them the same way for you as we would build them for ourselves. The first step in the process of having super accurate arrows is to fit the arrow to your bow. So you have to know the specs of your bow. For me, I'm shooting a 27 and a half inch draw length and I'm shooting a 65 pound bow. So I need an arrow that's gonna match those specs. What I'm talking about here is spine selection. Having a perfectly spined arrow that matches your bow setup is the number one thing you need to have an accurate arrow right out of the gate. And that leads me to the next step, selecting components. This part of the process is a little bit of personal preference, but you have to understand what component does what to the end result of your arrow. So we'll talk about the components on the front end of the arrow first. For the Exodus MMT builds, we have three options for inserts, aluminum, brass, and we now offer a stainless steel option, and I'll get into why. So when choosing your components, number one, there's gonna be a weight difference, and number two, there's gonna be a cost difference. These aluminum inserts are gonna weigh around 10 grains. The brass inserts are gonna weigh around 30 grains, but aluminum is a harder material than brass. Although the brass is heavier, it gives you a little bit more FOC in the front end of it, it is a softer material. That is why, we now offer a stainless steel option. The stainless steel is gonna weigh the same as the brass, but it's a harder material. The difference there is the cost. So the stainless steel is going to be less cost efficient than the brass. So you have to know what you're getting into with every build. You also have to take into consideration the weight of these inserts for the end build. For the Exodus MMT builds, every arrow is gonna come standard with a six inch carbon tube, which we call a CTI in the front of the arrow. So this is gonna add an additional 30 grains and it's going to build up the front of that arrow super, super strong. So the structural integrity of these arrows at the front end of it, it's super impressive. So aluminum coupled with my CTI is gonna give me about 40 grains of insert weight plus a 100 grain broadhead. Once you've decided what you want on the front of the arrow, don't skip what's on the back of your arrow. If you're looking at the 3D Builder, you'll see you have three different options for knocks. You have the Boning Blazer Knock, which is just a standard white knock. You have Fire Knock S Knocks, and you have Lighted Fire Knocks. The biggest difference between these two knocks is gonna be the fit on your arrow. So it just goes back to knowing your bow setup. You need a wider string serving for the Boning Blazer Knocks and you need a smaller string serving for the fire knocks. Don't skip these steps. These are going to help you have a more accurate arrow, I promise you, and that leads me to the next step. The third step in this process is to head out to the arrow saw and square the front ends of the arrow. When we get these arrow shafts in from the manufacturer, they might not be perfectly square cut on the front end of it. So all we're gonna do here is take a full length shaft, go to our arrow saw and cut a quarter inch off of the front end of the arrow. That's going to give us a squared fit. Just to fine tune it, after we cut them, we'll head on over to our squaring tool and finish fine tuning the front square of the arrow. Super critical part of this process, that the front end of your arrow is not square, your broadhead flight is going to suffer. To ensure we get a square fit on the end, the front end of the arrow, I have a squaring tool here and I'm just gonna take a Sharpie marker, a silver Sharpie marker, and I'm going to put a mark around that. And all that's gonna do is let me know after I make a couple marks if the end is square. If all of the silver is gone, the front end of this arrow is square. So I'm just gonna take this and do a couple passes. Doesn't take much, and you can see that the silver is gone on that shaft. So I'll do this for every shaft. This step in the process is something that cannot be overlooked. You cannot miss this, especially 
when it comes to shooting broadheads. If the front end of your arrow is not square and the insert doesn't fit square and flush, you're gonna have a wobbly front end and that's gonna give you terrible broadhead flight. So do not skip this step in the process. It's tedious, it takes time, but in the end, it's gonna pay off big time. Once you've ensured that the front end of the arrow, the side that your insert is gonna be square, we have a little bit of a unique process here for the Exodus arrows. I have here my insert. This is an aluminum insert. The front end of this insert has an angle that is gonna marry the front end of this arrow. And what that allows it to do is it gets rid of the mushrooming effect. If you hit something hard, it's a lot better fit, it's stronger, and it just adds some structural integrity to the front end of the arrow. So this step is specific to the Exodus MMT arrows. If you're not building these arrows with these inserts, a chamfering tool is not gonna be necessary, but for the purposes of this video, building these arrows, we'll show you how we chamfer the front end of the arrows to ensure a perfect fit with these inserts. So here we just have a drill with the chamfering tool on the end of it. And what we're gonna do is put the front end of the arrow, make sure you are chamfering the correct end of the arrow into this drill and hit the trigger. What that's gonna do is create an angle on the front end of this arrow that marries the insert and you will have a perfect flush fit at the end of this. Now we're actually gonna start prepping the arrows to be built. So cutting and chamfering creates a lot of carbon fiber dust. It's super dirty and that is going to affect the how the epoxy sets up within your build. So now we need to clean. In this process, acetone is our best friend. So we have these little tubes here. We're gonna fill these up with acetone, just enough to cover the front six inches of the arrow. And I'll explain why here in a second. It's important to clean all of the components that you're going to use. But before we clean them, we want to make sure all of our components are actually weighing the exact same. So we have a scale and make sure that scale's zeroed out. So I have to weigh each and every insert and each and every CTI that's gonna go into this build. So I'll take 12 inserts here, weigh them all individually and make sure they all weigh the same. 10.2, 10.2, 10.2, 10.2. .2. If it's 10.0, I grab a different one. The goal with our weights in these is we want all of our inserts to weigh the exact same throughout the entire build. So all of our CTIs are gonna be down to the exact decibel and the insert is gonna be the same because our end goal is we want all of these arrows to weigh within one or two grains of each other. So when you start adding glue, and you have epoxy differences, you start to get a little variance in weight. So we'll weigh every insert before we clean it. That way we ensure that we have a concise build throughout the entire process. So now stick these in the acetone while I weigh my CTIs. Once you have all your inserts weighed out, cleaned and prepped, you gotta clean the front end of the arrow shaft because on the inside of that arrow, you're gonna have a lot of carbon dust up in there and you don't want any of that. So we'll grab some longer cotton swabs and we'll take these back out of the acetone, give them a good shake. It's important to clean the inside of these here. So take the cotton swab and we will clean out the insides of here. If you have any carbon in here or you have any leftover acetone, your epoxy is not going to set up right and the structural integrity of the arrow will be sacrificed. The next part of prepping is epoxy. So we gotta talk about the epoxy that we're using with these builds. So this is the AeroVein epoxy. And the reason we choose this epoxy is it is a super slow setting epoxy and it allows us to work with it for a longer time. And one of the coolest parts about this epoxy is it'll actually still give, it has a little bit of give, it'll bend when it's fully set up. If you have impact with something hard and you have an epoxy that won't give it all, it's just gonna break. So the benefit to using this epoxy is it gives you a little bit of forgiveness. If you come into contact with something hard, it's gonna last really long and it's gonna give you a concentric fit for your insert. So this stuff can actually fill a one millimeter gap 
within your arrow as long as you let it cure properly you'll have a super concentric fit with your insert and have no troubles with flight this stuff mixes in a one-to-one -one ratio so in order for us to get a proper cure we need to mix three cc's of each that builds about four dozen arrows for us all right so the epoxy is mixed up cleanliness is the top priority here so we're going to wear a rubber glove on my left hand which is the hand that i'm going to touch the inserts with so now we start to build we take our clean inserts and you just take the end of it put a little bit of glue on there set that aside grab the cti with the glove hand grab your popsicle stick put a little bit of glue around the edge that is going to be going inside the arrow. Take your insert, put it in the CTI, spin it around, make sure the glue is covering all the way around. Take an arrow shaft. You wanna make sure you're building from the right end. So you have your chamfered end and you stick that over top of the CTI. Give it a little spin, make sure you have glue all the way around each side. And then you just slowly press down. See that donut there? That's what you want. So you make sure you have a concentric fit. You have glue on every edge. Once you get to this point here, you'll see you have some leftover glue to keep it efficient. Take a CTI, wipe off the excess glue, press down again to ensure that that insert is in there. Now this is the most important part of this build. Once you have the insert in, you have the epoxy set up, the number one mistake that folks make when they're building their arrows is they take them and set them down and move on to the next one. What that is doing is this glue, it's fluid. So it is all going down to the bottom of the arrow and you're gonna have a lot of glue down here and no glue up here. So your arrow is gonna be uneven and you're gonna have a wobble effect, especially when you put broadheads on. So once we glue every arrow, we just take them and put them in these bench quivers, and that ensures that they cure upright. So you have even distribution throughout the front end of the arrow. Concentricity, is that even a word? Having a concentric fit on the insert is the most important part of this entire process to get consistent, accurate flight. So we have the one dozen arrows curing in the upright position. These have to sit for 24 hours before we can do anything with them. So we'll come back and we'll finish the build process. We've come to the part where we need to cut the arrow to the correct length. Now this is going to be where your forgiveness comes into play. This is super important. What we're trying to accomplish with the arrow length is to put the node of the arrow on your arrow rest when you're at full draw. This right here this portion of your arrow is the only portion of the arrow that does not flex when it is released. That is the node of the arrow. We have videos on the channel of how to find the node. What we're going to try to accomplish here is to cut this arrow to a length to where the node of the arrow sits on your rest when you're at full draw. Typically, when you don't have that CTI in front of the shaft, your arrow node is a spot on the arrow. So getting that portion on your arrow rest, you have little variance in room here for to get this on your arrow rest. But with the CTI, it elongates the node and it gives you more forgiveness. So you can be off a little bit. The node on this is going to be about three quarters of an inch. So we have a little bit of play. The optimal length for us with the Exodus MMT is anywhere between a half inch and three quarters inch carbon to carbon length shorter than your draw length. So I'm a 27 and a half inch draw length. I'm gonna cut this arrow to 27 or 26 and 7 eighths. Somewhere in that area is going to put my node directly on my arrow rest when I'm at full draw and that's gonna be the most forgiving arrow possible. So up until this point, we chose the correct spine. We chose our components. We prepped the front ends of the arrows. We have let the epoxy cure and we have cut and squared the back end of the arrow. These arrows are now cut to the proper length to where the node is gonna be sitting on my arrow rest and now becomes another critical part of the 
process. Spine location. So we have our PAP system from Fireknock. This is going to save us a ton of time in this build. Another way to spine locate would be to Noctune. But with this process, we kind of eliminate the need to Noctune. You might have to tweak a little bit. But uh, what we're going to do here is take our cut arrow. It's very important that you do this with the cut arrow. And here's why. These arrows do not have a linear spine. The spine in this is a uh, spiral. We have a spiral spine. So as the arrow becomes shorter, the spine is moving. So you put this arrow here on the PAP system and you will now roll your finger over the arrow shaft and you will feel that there's valleys in the shaft. So a lot of them will have two valleys, one deeper than another. So once you find the deepest valley, you'll take your Sharpie marker and you will mark the top of the shaft where it's in that valley. What that tells you is that is the weakest point on that arrow shaft. So that is the first dynamic bend location is what we're doing there. We will do that for every arrow. The spine is going to be in a different spot or the weak point is going to be in a different spot on all these. So make sure you do it with every arrow. So now we have all of our first dynamic bends located on these arrows, ensuring that we're going to get the same launch out of the bow. Now all that's left to do is to fletch these babies up. So the first step in the fletching process is to clean the back end of the arrows. That way the glue sticks to the carbon better. If they're dirty, you can peel them right off. So very critical part. Let's get these back ends cleaned up. So the first dynamic bend point that we marked is going to be where your cock vein goes. So we have this arrow vein jig here. Very important that we fletch every single one of these arrows on the same jig because they're calibrated the same way. Consistent, consistent, consistent. So we will put this arrow in the jig with that Sharpie mark facing up. In our scenario here, the black veins are the caulk veins. Before we put any glue on this, we want to wipe it off with some acetone. So we'll clean with acetone, remove the acetone. We'll put the glue in the same direction that we cleaned the fletching. That way we're not putting any dirt back over top of what we cleaned off. Take the clamp, press her down, give her about 10 seconds, and then repeat the process. This is a three fletch configuration. So we'll go zero degrees, 120 degrees, and 240 degrees. And we'll have a perfectly straight fletched arrow. For these builds, we're using Aerovane 2, and these have the airfoil technology which will entice the arrow to rotate right upon recovery. So there's no need for us to put a helical, there's no need for us to put an offset. The vein is gonna do all the work and we'll have a concise, accurate arrow. And there you have a perfectly fletched Exodus MMT arrow. All that's left to do is throw your knock in there and real quick before you shoot, any arrow from anybody, make sure you flex it before you put that thing in your bow. Safety's not sexy, but it's important if you want to keep hunting. So enjoy your new, perfectly built, super accurate, super forgiving Exodus MMT arrows. If all that seemed like a lot, too many steps for you, here's a bonus step. Head to the website exodusoutdoorgear.com and we'll go through all of those steps for you and build a tailor-built hunting arrow specifically for your bow hunting setup, and all you have to do is get them out of the package, knock them on your bow, shoot them, and enjoy.